Hi friends, today I will teach you regarding the benign endometrial hyperplasia. The endometrial hyperplasia can be divided into the two varieties. It can be benign or it, it can be atypical. Today we will discuss regarding the benign one, right? So what do you mean by word hyperplasia? Uh, you are right, uh, it's an increased number of cells. So the endometrial hyperplasia include proliferation of the endometrial glands. So the glands are increased. Uh, normally what happens, the gland to stroma ratio is uh, 1 to 1. You might be familiar that endometrium is made up of glands and stroma. So the ratio is 1 to 1, right? Glands and stroma. So the hyperplasia is called whenever there is an increased number of glands as compared to stroma, more than 1 to 1, right? The endometrial glands will be more than 50% of the stroma. So you can see that uh, there are many endometrial glands here, uh, all that are increasing in number. Okay, so that is regarding the endometrial hyperplasia. So what can be the etiology of this uh, hyperplasia? Okay, so the common stimulus for proliferation of the endometrial glands is, you already know that increased estrogen. So the unopposed action of the estrogen will lead to endometrial hyperplasia. So why this estrogen increase? Uh, it can be because of some ovarian granulosa cell tumor, uh, functional granulosa cell tumor uh, we should specify. I mean if it's functional then it will produce estrogen. Uh, sometimes polycystic ovarian disease, uh, it can be the causative factor, right? It is very common nowadays, PCOD. Uh, the other reason is obesity. Now, what happened in obesity? Uh, the adipose tissue is having one enzyme that is aromatase. So the obese patient will have definitely more adipose tissue and so the more aromatase activity. So that enzyme will convert uh, androstenedione into the estrone. Uh, so there will be endometrial hyperplasia, right? Uh, suppose if in the postmenopausal woman you are giving the estrogen therapy, then definitely it can cause endometrial hyperplasia. In the breast cancer, we are using the drug tamoxifen that can also uh, lead to endometrial hyperplasia. So that is regarding the etiology, clear? Uh, now we will discuss regarding how to diagnose it histopathologically. Usually the clinical presentation is excessive bleeding. So we have received this uh, uh, dilatation and curative material from a 27-year female patient. Uh, we had done the microscopic analysis and diagnosis was endometrial hyperplasia. So what is the microscopic features uh, that is uh, suggestive of this hyperplasia? Okay, so first of all, you have to remember that uh, gland to stroma ratio is uh, 1 jump 1. Uh, if it is increased uh, more than 1 jump 1 means uh, gland is increased as compared to stroma, uh, then it is called as endometrial hyperplasia. So there will be endometrial gland proliferation straightforward. That is endometrial hyperplasia. But in benign entity, benign endometrial hyperplasia, the atypia is typically absent. And there will be scanty stroma between the glands. Uh, you can able to see that uh, stroma is very scanty here, right? In between the gland, there is a very scanty stroma. Uh, usually, uh, if you analyze this field, then uh, there are more glands as compared to stroma. In fact, the stroma is very less. All these are glands, endometrial glands, right? Uh, they are increasing number. Okay. Sometimes in such endometrial hyperplasia, uh, you can see some metaplasia. Metaplasia means uh, a replacement of one epithelium by another epithelium. So sometimes it can replace by tubal epithelium. It is called tubal metaplasia. Sometimes there will be mucinous metaplasia. Uh, sometimes it can be replaced by squamous epithelium called as squamous metaplasia. Uh, sometimes it can be secretory metaplasia, right? So metaplasia can be seen. Uh, you have to remember that uh, this proliferated endometrial gland uh, will usually not so much complex and it will not show the atypia in case of a benign endometrial hyperplasia. If it is atypical one, then there will be complexity and more atypia. Uh, this was the field of uh, benign endometrial hyperplasia. The diagnosis is uh, straightforward, right? Uh, increased number of glands. Uh, that's why uh, we have given this diagnosis. And uh, you can able to see that there will be no atypia, right? 
uh, lining cells are not much atypical uh, you can able to see some infolding in the glands right so you might be confused but atpi is typically absent so that is a so the diagnosis was benign endometrial hyperplasia right initially what we are doing uh, endometrial hyperplasia is divided into many types there are many classifications for this endometrial hyperplasia like that of simple or complex endometrial hyperplasia and each variety is having been uh, without atpia or with atpia category but now according to the who classification uh, that was given in 2014 uh, you have to divide the endometrial hyperplasia only into two varieties all right one is benign endometrial hyperplasia and another one is atypical endometrial hyperplasia that is also known as endometrioid intraepithelial neoplasia uh, why this classification is important because if you are giving the diagnosis benign one then chances of endometrioid adenocarcinoma in future is very less but if you are giving the diagnosis of atypical endometrial hyperplasia then there is definitely chance of uh, endometrial adenocarcinoma in future so uh, so the who has uh, simplified the classification so please remember that uh, you have to give the classification only in this way either you have to give benign or it can be atypical no simple complex like that of where it is used nowadays right so that is regarding the endometrial hyperplasia benign one so in that way you can diagnose it's very easy to diagnose the glands are increased in number right there will be increased number of glands as compared to stroma you can see many glands more than 50 percent of the stroma there will be scanty stroma in between the glands so you can say there will be gland crowding and uh, atpia and complexity is definitely not present if it is present then your diagnosis will be atypical one uh, which mutations can be uh, present in such uh, endometrial hyperplasia uh, it's usually present in atypical endometrial hyperplasia right in this atypical variety like that of endometrial adenocarcinoma sometimes few mutations can be present like that of uh, p10 mutation that is a tumor suppressor gene it can be mutated sometimes px2 gene mutation can be present or there can be mutation in the kras right so all that mutation can lead to atypical endometrial hyperplasia or carcinoma so this was the latest classification now what can be the treatment of this endometrial hyperplasia the treatment is straightforward the estrogen is increased so you have to give the progesterone the commonly one used is levon or chestril uh, intrauterine cobrine uh, intrauterine contraceptive device is uh, the mode of choice for administration so iucd can be inserted that contain levon or chestril but in atypical high endometrial hyperplasia uh, the gynecologists usually prefer to do hysterectomy if reproductive function is over so that is regarding the endometrial hyperplasia hope my video will be beneficial to you in making the diagnosis of this uh, benign endometrial hyperplasia if you like my video subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever i am posting the new video uh, thank you very much